Good morning all. So we'll start with the first module of Geotechnical Engineering 1. These are the contents. We have the introduction to soil mechanics, the major soil deposits in India, and the basic soil properties which is based on the three phase system diagram which includes void ratio, porosity, degree of saturation, air content, moisture content, specific gravity, and unit weight, etc. Then you have the relationships between the basic soil properties. Then you have the determination of water content by Owen drying method, the specific gravity determination using pyknometer and specific gravity bottle method. Then comes the determination of field density by sand replacement method and cover curtain method. Then you have two terms, sensitivity and thixotropy. And based on all these contents, you have a few numerical problems as well. Now coming to the introduction, the origin of soil, you may have read through the articles based on the origin of soils in your perhaps your plus two physics or science in general. So obviously it's due to the weathering of rocks. It can be due to mechanical disintegration or chemical decomposition. And the weathering of rock by the agents of weathering result in soil formation. And the geological cycle that consists of erosion, transportation, deposition, and upheaval is what leads to the formation of soil the way we see it. Now, when you when you talk about the formation of soil and the origin of soil, you can classify the soil into two: residual soil or sedimentary soil, and transported soil. Again, these might be the areas that you are familiar with in your in your basic science classes but again for us to get introduced to the geotechnical engineering subject we'll try to peripherally discuss what residual soil and what transported soil mean but the residual soil is soil that stays at the place of its formation just above the parent rock after weathering so it's residual and it's sedimentary in nature it is at the place of its formation and it has not transported now the properties of a bottom layer resemble that of the parent rock. Whereas a transported soil, of course as the name suggests, is something that has been deposited at a place away from the place of its origin, which means the properties is usually different from the properties of the rock, the parent rock. So the key differences of procedural soil from the transported soil are marked in red forms and uh, residual soil is usually called a sedimentary soil as well. Now the formation of soil, like I said, uh, can be due to mechanical disintegration or due to chemical decomposition. The mechanical disintegration may be due to the temperature changes, the wedging action of ice, the spreading of roots, or even abrasion, the rubbing between of particles. Whereas a chemical decomposition includes oxidation, carbonation, hydration, leaching, etc. Now, when you talk about mechanical disintegration, all these four points, not limited to the four points of course, but the four points that I have listed here, will give you no chemical significant change, which means it got disintegrated, not decomposed. The rock particles got disintegrated, reduced in size, and formed the soil. It has not undergone any considerable chemical changes, whether it's due to temperature change, wedging action of ice, spreading of roots, or abrasion. There won't be much of a considerable change in the chemical composition of the parent rock while it forms the soil, whereas in chemical decomposition, which may probably be due to oxidation, carbonation, hydration or leaching as the case would be, would result in soil particles which has got considerable change in its chemical formats. Now, the transportation of soil can be due to different agents, for example water, water transported soil, then you can have wind transported soil, and you can have glacier transported soil, or even the gravity transported soil. So the agents of transportation includes wind, water, glacier, etc. 
Now, the major soil deposits in India includes the alluvial soil. Then you have the black cotton soil. Then you have the lateritic soil. And you have the desert soil. And a few stretches of marine soil deposits, etc. Now I have just brushed through these portions of major soil deposits, the soil formation, agents of changes, etc. Because these are just the introduction to the subject. You can have a detailed study on all these topics, the major soil deposits, the formation, uh, the different types of soils in India, etc. Uh, based on the standard textbooks, but the portions that we are interested as geotechnical engineers starts with the three phase system and its relations. Like I said in the introductory class, soil in its proper matrix form will have soil particles in between which you can have the voids. So the voids may be filled with water or air. So for us to understand the chemistry, for us to understand the 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 the, uh, the analysis part we can have this analogy where you have three phases in this particular figure you have just two phases liquid and gas right so this first glass is full of milk second glass is empty but technically it's full of air and a third glass can be considered as half full or half empty but technically it's full half with milk and half with air likewise the three phase system diagram where the soil particles forms voids in between and these voids can be either filled with water the one that you see in blue color or it can be filled with air so when you segregate this matrix what you get is solid water and air so this is a basic philosophy of geotechnical engineering based on which you define different parameters like void ratio porosity degree of saturation etc so originally soil has solid particle like this the brown color water like this the blue color and air like this the white color blended to form a complex mixture for us, conventionally, each of these are separated out for studies like this, the figure that you see to the right side. So even if originally the soil exists like this to the left side, for us, for us to analyze and to define different parameters, we conventionally segregate and separate out solid, water and air, which we call as a three-phase system diagram. First. You have the solid soil like this then you have the water like this and then you have the air like this so of course soil will have a definite volume and a definite mass conventionally the three phase system diagram will have the volumes marked to the left side and the masses marked to the right side like this I've marked Vs as a volume of soil vw the volume of water and va as the volume of air now the volume of water and the volume of air combined together is a volume of the void 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 spaces so as you can see in this picture the metrics of soil and the voids the voids will either be filled with water or be filled with air so the volume of water and the volume of air clubbed together will form the volume of voids vv or VV is equal to VA plus VW. Likewise, VV plus VS, volume of voids plus volume of soil, is equal to the total volume, V. So the entire volume of the soil matrix will be V, which consists of volume of voids and volume of solids. And volume of voids can either be volume of air or volume of water. Or even a mixture of that. Subsequently, we can mark the masses MS, MW, and MA 
to the right side. So in short, you have soil, water and air with volumes marked to the left side and masses marked to the right side called as a three phase system diagram because you have three phases of soil, water and air. Now this three phase system diagram is a basics is a basic uh, concept based on which you define the parameters like voids ratio, porosity, etc., which lays the foundation for the subject. So it's very important to study this concept of three phase system diagram. Now at some point of our time, we would understand that MA is equal to approximately zero. Volume of air exists, but the mass of air can at times be taken as equal to zero. Likewise, when you have completely saturated soil, for example, in this figure, the figure that you see to the top right corner, when you don't have white color, but you have blue and brown, you can see that the void spaces are completely filled with water, which means it's completely saturated. So in that case, this line extends all the way up to the top and you are left with just water and soil which is a completely saturated case where VA is equal to zero, MA is equal to zero and volume of water will be equal to volume of voids. So that's the case for a completely saturated soil system. Likewise, when you have a completely dry case, which means in this figure, top right corner, when you take a look, when you don't have the blue color, what remains is just the brown color and the white color, which means you just have the soil solids and the air. Matrix is completely dry. So in the three phase system, it gets modified with no blue color. So whatever remains in the void space will be air. So VA will be equal to VV, volume of voids and volume of air will be same. We'll discuss each of these cases subsequently while discussing the different definitions.